They say that EVs are toxic, dangerous, and basically nuclear bombs on wheels. If you believe every comment you hear on the internet, you'd think that EVs were designed by Lex Luthor and powered by unicorn blood and cyanide. You know what I say? Let's blast this bunk. Here's how it usually goes. EVs are full of rare earth materials. They're more toxic than a middle school cafeteria. And when they die, they just get dumped into landfills because, you know, that's definitely how modern waste streams work. Sound familiar? Let's slow down. Lithium ion batteries aren't lead acid batteries. They are sealed systems. There's no liquid sloshing around. There's not oozing poison like a busted 80s sci-fi prop. In fact, the EPA classifies most EV battery packs as non-hazardous unless damaged, like when you put them through a crash test. Meanwhile, every gas-powered car on the road still rocking a lead-acid battery that's full of sulfuric acid, and it vents hydrogen gas when it's charging. And oh, by the way, it's venting that hydrogen gas within a few inches of thousands of tiny explosions that we call internal combustion. No danger there, right? But yeah, sure, we're the dangerous ones. You've seen the headlines on the news. Tesla bursts into flames. EV catches fire in garage. They cue the dramatic music, they do a slow zoom, and there's ominous narration. But here's what they rarely show. Ice vehicles, you know, the ones that carry flammable liquids and metal tanks, actually catch fire way more often. But hey, don't let a mountain of fire data confuse your narrative. According to the Auto Insurance EZ, using data from the National Fire Protection Association and the NTSB, ICE vehicles, internal combustion engine vehicles, are over 60 times more likely to catch fire than EVs. Let me say that again slowly for those of you sitting in the back. 60 times more often. This is a container full of gasoline. That's literal fire juice. It's just sitting there waiting near a hot engine, near electrical wires, near pressurized fuel rods. And suddenly, boom. And every time you fill up, you're one drop cell phone away from a Michael Bay scene. But all of that is in a future episode. So for now, let's get back to our regularly scheduled bunk blaster. All right, so let's talk end of life. What really happens to EV batteries when they're done rolling down the road? They get recycled. In fact, battery recycling is big business. Redwood Materials and Ascend Elements, they're all scaling up operations to handle the incoming wave of EV batteries years before they even start to arrive in volume. Redwood Materials is already recovering up to 95% of critical materials like lithium, nickel, and cobalt. Even before they get recycled, many get a second life as backup power for buildings, schools, or solar storage. One battery might serve for 20 years before ever being broken down. You heard that right, 20 years. And the best part? The materials aren't burned like oil, they're reused. Because you can't recycle a gallon of gas, you just light it on fire and wave goodbye as it goes out your tailpipe in the form of CO2, water vapor, and PM2.5 volatile organic compounds that cause cancer and respiratory distress. But hey, who's keeping score? Let's be real. Mining for anything, nickel, lithium, cobalt, has an environmental impact. But let's compare that impact, shall we? Oil requires constant extraction, constant shipping, constant refining, and finally, burning. Every gallon we use is gone forever. With batteries, we mine once, and then that metal can be reused for decades over and over again. And the size of the land footprint? Oil extraction worldwide uses about 50,000 square miles. You heard that right. That's an area about the size of the state of New York. Lithium mining? 
less than a thousand square miles and that's shrinking as technology improves. And remember, every EV battery reduces how much we keep drilling. When you drive an electric car, you reduce demand for oil. You stop burning and you start storing. So are battery chemicals toxic? Sure, if you grind them up and snort them like powdered donuts from an all-night diner. Here's what you got to understand. Take bleach, for example. It's legal, and it's probably under your sink. But then you look at an EV battery cell, and it's non-toxic unless you really, really, really go out of your way to hurt yourself with it. EV battery injuries are vanishingly rare. Meanwhile, household cleaners cause thousands of poisonings every single year. And we don't ban bleach. We label it, and we use it responsibly. EV batteries aren't kryptonite. They're just energy storage engineered to not explode or leak. Just like the gas tank and the fuel delivery system in your gasoline car is engineered not to explode every time you turn the ignition key. What's next, you might ask? Well, the battery tech of the future is going to be even safer. Solid state batteries eliminate the liquid electrolyte, meaning even less fire risk and longer life. Companies like Toyota and QuantumScape are working hard to bring solid-state tech to mass production by the end of this decade. And sodium-ion batteries? They're cobalt-free, lithium-free, and already in small-scale production in Asia. They're even being tested in the real world. Battery chemistries are evolving fast. And every version gets cleaner, safer, and more recyclable. So EV batteries are toxic time bombs? Not even close. They're sealed, safe, and smartly engineered. And unlike gasoline, we don't burn them and walk away. We reuse, we repurpose, and we improve them. So we don't need that sign I had over my charging port after all, huh? So like, subscribe, and share this with somebody who still thinks EVs run on fairy dust and unicorn blood and explode at red lights every time you hit the brakes. Until next time, I'll see you out there or somewhere along that route from point A to point B. And for goodness sake, please don't drill into your EV battery to see if you can get some glow-in-the-dark primordial ooze to use in your favorite sci-fi YouTube video. That's not how this works.